Jeg vil gerne sige tak til jer uh, for din tid, og jeg vil gerne fortælle, jeg er så glad med at fortælle jer om min, min projekt uh, um, uh, som her som det og sammenhæng mellem selvreporteret fysisk arbejdskrav og objektivt målinger. Men hvorfor var det så vigtigt at gøre den projekt? Fordi uh, i Danmark og alle vel, uh, vi, vi har flere nationale undersøgelser, og uh, vi bruger kun selvreporteret information der, fordi vi har kun sportskema. Men vi ved, det er ikke så korrekt. Så hvad skal vi gøre? Skal vi sige, okay, du kan bruge kun objektive målinger, men hvis du har en national undersøgelse, så du har flere uh, personer, du skal måle på. Så det er ikke, pra det er ikke praktisk, og det koster meget, hvis du bruger objektive målinger. Så hvad skal vi gå? Så i vores projekt, vi uh, foreslår, og vi udvikler nogle metoder, uh, som vi kan bruge og kalibrere selvreporteret information. Så det er mit projekt. Og um, ja, jeg er meget komfortabel på engelsk, så jeg vil gerne skifte engelsk. Men uh, mine slides uh, er på dansk, så jeg håber, det er okay. Ja. Okay, så so, I would like to tell you about my two of my research. Um, first is about, is self-reported information correct? And if it is not, then can we really do something to improve upon it? And the second was to, is the self-reported information of physical activities and demands at work correct? And if it is not, can we do something about it? Can we improve them? So, so the first research is about sitting. And um, as we know that sitting is a very important risk factor for many diseases and uh, But if you, you have seen these posters probably on internet or somewhere, that sitting is killing you, it's like a demon. But it's, I think it's a very exaggeration of the picture. But it could be because sitting is associated with these kind of diseases, which is a main cause of deaths in, around the world. But my main point is that, that sitting around the world has been measured by mainly questionnaires or self-reported ways that people have used. But And the example could be these kind of questions, which are very popular questions to measure sitting time. But are they precise? If we really need to know if they are precise or not. And um, if, they are, if they're biased in the sense that, for example, uh, people who are obese, they tend to underreport their sitting time compared to those people who are not obese. So obesity is a bias factor in terms of self-reported information of sitting time. So we need to figure out that. And then if we think that the questionnaire-based information is, is inaccurate, can we do something about to calibrate it so that we can push the questionnaire-based sitting time close to the true measurements of sitting time? So that was, those were the questions that we posed in our project. And that's why we have the formal. The purpose of the project was to first look at the association between the uh, self-reported and objective Uh, measurements of sitting time and see if the questionnaire based sitting time is accurate. And if it is not, we should develop a method by which we can calibrate the questionnaire based sitting time in a way that it goes close to the truth. And when I say this second point, I would like to give an example. There is a picture, uh, there is a low back pain intensity on the Y and sitting time on the X. So for example, if we see a nice association positive association between sitting time and pain using objective measurements, but probably we do not see that using self-reported information. So our aim is not to look at this association, but to push or calibrate uh, sports schema based information close to the <coughs> accelerometer based information. So to do that, we needed to measure it. So first we measured sitting time objectively. And we used two accelerometers on, which were attached on the body, <coughs> on the trunk, and on the thigh. And we measured for several days, including at least two working days. And then we measured this customized Acti4 software, which identifies different postures, such as sitting, standing, and some other activities. And this example, Andreas has already touched upon it, but I'll just tell you that, for example, in this figure, 
They, this is a picture for one worker. He's working from 8.30 to 5 o'clock. And on the left side, we have types of activities. And on the right side, we have the time spent on these activities during work, for example. So in this case, this guy is sitting for about 33% of the time. And I would like to tell you something about the validation of this software. That, for example, for sitting time, this software is accurate more than the accuracy is more than 99%. And this was during the semi-standardized conditions, but we, we also did it for free living conditions where the sensitivity and specificity was more than 93%. So overall, the software is very accurate when it, it identified different postures very accurately. Okay. So that was about the objective measurements. Then we have the self-reported measurements of sitting time. And we use this question, yeah, this question to measure sitting time during the whole day. So we asked uh, during the whole working day how much of your working time, uh, how much of your time that you were sitting, including transport time too. And we asked to re report in hours and minutes, which were converted to total minutes later. Okay. Then, if I think that the questionnaire-based sitting time is not accurate, then I need to develop this method. To do that, we, we found some factors which can bias the self-reported information of sitting time. So we dig into the literature, we use our logic, and we come up with a list of the variables that could be a potential bias factors, and it can help improving the uh, questionnaire-based sitting time. So those factors were demographic variables, such as age and gender. Then there were some factors related to work, such as uh, workability and influence at work. There were some factors related to health, uh, BMI, health, and pain. Then we had some factors related to the lifestyle. So these were the factors that we considered to include in the model, but it is not necessary that we will include all of them. So it was just the first, st first stage of modeling. So we did some statistics, which is a long procedure, which I will not tell you now because I do not have that much time, but I will tell you uh, the results, how it looks like when we use this method. So first result, are they? Uh, associate, I mean, if the questionnaire based sitting time is accurate. To do that, on the y axis we have uh, sitting time in minutes, and on the x we have two methods uh, which were used to measure sitting time. So when we use objective measurements to measure sitting time, they were sitting for about, about 400 and more than that, more than 400 minutes. But when we use questionnaire, they were sitting, they reported that they are sitting for about 200 minutes or something. So they highly underreported their sitting time. And if you look at the difference, it's 193 minutes. That's more than three hours. <laughs> That's a lot of, lots of difference. So it can really affect the findings when people use questionnaire-based sitting time. So that was the first finding. But this is also another thing that uh, we also looked at the Bland and Alpen plot, where on the y-axis we have the difference between the two methods, and on the x we have the average of them. So and each point uh, represent one worker. So each worker has one point here. So for example, if I want to I wanna say, for example, this guy. He is pretty good at, because the difference is zero, around zero. So he's very good at telling that what time that he's sitting for. But for example, this guy. He is having a difference of 700 minutes. That's a lot of <laughs> difference. So this picture just gives you a good picture on how the workers report. And Overall, the difference was 194 minutes again, so it's more than three hours of difference on average. And the limits of agreement, uh, those dotted line are called limits of agreement. If they're wider, there is a lot of variation. It means the agreement is not good between the methods. And you can see the limits of agreement are from minus 149 to 536. That's a really wide limits of agreement. So these two methods are not really in agreement to each other. But we need to, okay, the correlation was also pretty low between them. But we wanted to do something about it. We don't want to stop there. So we developed a method by which we can calibrate the questionnaire based sitting time. Yes, and then the results. How did it go? So basically, when we did not use our method, it was just used questionnaire based sitting time and objective measurements. On the Y, we have objective measurements. On the X, we have post schema based sitting and each point represents each worker, and the R square between, the association between them is 
and the line uh, shows if the points are very close to that, this line, it means better accuracy. But you can see that the points are really spread out and the R square is 10% means that questionnaire based sitting time explains only 10% of the objective measurements. So 90% is non-explainable by the questionnaire. Sorry. Okay, oh, yeah, Paul. Jeg synes, jeg lavede mærke til der før, øh, hvis man tog gennemsnit af det rapporterede, så lå de faktisk lige omkring 0. Altså, det var ikke sådan, at folk havde en tendens til at overvurdere eller undervurdere. Ja. Øh, så hvis man tager en gruppe, så får man faktisk næsten en, en retvisende måling. Gør man ikke det? Eller? Ja. Nej. Nej. Altså, if it's all reported. So if you go back... To the plant now. To the så viser det faktisk, at når de, øh, hvis de alle sammen skulle på øh, gruppeniveau ja. vurdere samtidig, så, så skulle skyen af pletter være, øh, være fladere omkring 0. Okay. Her der viser det faktisk, at de både overrapporterer op til 536 ja. Ja. minutter, ja. men de, nogle af dem underrapporterer også til ja. minus 149 ja. minutter. Så tager det Så i gennemsnit der. Så overrapporterer det yeah. 200 minutter. Mm. Ja, 150,6. Ja, ja. præcis. Så hvis de som, som gruppe skulle, ja. øh, skulle gå i nul, så, så skulle den hvad skal man sige, tykke streg være ved nul, og ikke ved 200. I'm sorry, I didn't understand properly. Thank you. <laughs> But then the results of the model, that, so I was explaining this, that, uh, It, the questionnaire based setting time was explaining only 10% of the objective measurements. So 90% is non-explainable. Look what we found using our method. So when we use our method, you can see that now the points are very close to the line of identity. So it means that it has become now more, it can explain more of the objective measurements and the R square went up to 44%. So it means that now questionnaire based sitting time can explain at least 44% of the objective measurements. And this is a very good improvement. If you see the numbers in literature, I think this is one of the best that we have found till now. So it's a great improvement, but of course there is a room of improvement again. So this is a very first step. So what we found is that there is a low correspondence between the two methods. Questionnaire based sitting time is not so accurate. And <coughs> our method can add a possibility of calibrating the questionnaire based setting time. And how can we use them? So uh, it can be used if we have already collected data on setting time. So we can use this model there to calibrate the questionnaire based setting time. But it can also be used if you're planning to collect data in future. Then we can use this model to calibrate the questionnaire based setting time. And also it can be used when we make national recommendations in Denmark and also in other countries. But i would like to say this is a far future of the application of the model because this is a very first study that we have done. We have to refine the model. There are lots of possibility to refine it. Look for the validity of the model also in other data sets and other populations too. But this is what we see as a future of the model. The second research was on if we can, if the physical activity at work accurate and if it is not, can we improve it? So to do that, we first measured it self-reportedly, and we use this question. Maybe you know about this question, Selton and Grimby's uh, four response category. It has been widely used all over in national surveys. I think it has been also used in AO 2012 and some other surveys too. But if you look in this question, there are three elements <laughs> which are important. Still cylinder, a sedentary work, or store go arbeid, that is the physical activities at work, and Pulse bill last night, uh, physical demands at work. So if this question, if we measure these three elements objectively, and if this question can explain some of these three elements measured objectively, it means this question has good validity, or it can explain some of the objectively <coughs> measured these three elements. So that's what we did first. So to do that, we first measure these three elements objectively. So I wouldn't go through again because we again used the accelerometers to measure activities and setting time. And then we measured the sedentary time at work, which was calculated by sitting together with lying time. So we marched both those, both those postures time together. 
For the physical activity time, we had standing time, uh, walking, running, stair climbing, and biking. They all, we merged all them together. But I have to say that during work, most of the time was spent on standing and walking, and very, very little time was spent on the other three activities. And the measurement of the phys car car cardio was, what do you call it? Shit. Um, the last thing for our uh, and we measured cardiorespiratory load, and I think Mary has touched upon it, so I wouldn't go through the measurement of it. But the hoi pulse be last name for Arbeit was the time at high heart rate reserve. And same procedure we, uh, the same procedure we adopted to make this model again, that we dig into the literature and figure out those factors which can bias this information. And those were, again, quite many of the variables were similar to before. Demographic variables, work-related variables, uh, health-related variables, and also lifestyle-related <coughs> variables. So again, we put them into the model and see if we can develop a model by which we can improve the, the physical activity work-related questionnaire-based information. So just to bring back the memory, this is the question that we are talking about. So this is the first result where we looked at how they look together, these two, met two methods. So on the left side, we have self-reported four response categories, answers that were replied for. And on the right side, we have objectively measured these categories. So for example, for sedentary work, we call a worker sedentary if he was spending more than 50% of his working time on sedentary postures. And for store go, we use more than 50% of the working time spending on these activities. And same here, Stogo Arbeit with moderate work cow. It means if he has some time spent on hoi, pulse be last name. And is this category if they are having a lot of time spent on uh, hoi, pulse be last name. So how did it go? For the, when we measured the workers objectively, if they are, they are having sedentary work, among them, all of those workers, we consider that they are having a sedentary work. Among them, only 25% of them said they have sedentary work. So 75% say they didn't have a sedentary work. And then 20% of the person who should be responding that they have store go work with no physical demands, only 20% said, yes, they have this. But 80% said, no, they don't. And same goes for 54% in the third category, and the fourth is 34%. So I just wanted to point out that this is not so accurate way of collecting information. But again, we didn't stop there. Uh, okay, that's one more result that uh, there is an association between the self-reported and objectively measured sedentary work and store goal work. How, did it, how does it look like when we did not use model? It was 22%. So it means the self-reported information can explain only 22% of the objective measurements. So the arrest is not explainable. And for, heart, uh, for the high post belastening or high work demands, how did it go for that? So the self-reported high physical demands can explain only 8% of the real physical work demands. So that was not a good result. But then we use our method for the sedentary time. It went up to 51%. That's again a very great number. And for the store go arbeit, it again went up to 51%. And for the high physics arbeit score, it went up to 27%. So if I see these numbers, they are again, I, I really like them because this is the best improvement that I have seen till now. Of course, there's a room of improvement. Like for example, we can use better measures. We can add more variables, which we didn't consider this time. We can refine the model. So there are lots of room of improvement, but this is a very good way that we can calibrate the questionnaire based information. So I would like to say that the questionnaire-based physical activities are not so accurate, but our method adds a possibility to calibrate them at least, and that they can be used in, again, the same way that I have uh, told you before. So what's the take-home message from my research? Is that questionnaire-based information on sitting time and physical activity uh, is not so accurate. But we shouldn't stop there. We should do something about it. And that our method 
helps at least calibrating those information in a way that they go a little bit closer to the truth. And that our method can be used in future, a far future in national industrials and national surveys, uh, already collected data, and also in when we make national recommendations. Yeah. So if you would like to read about my project, you can go to that link on NFA website and read and read about this project. Thank you.